Good evening. Um, welcome to the session. Uh, Sharon Feldman Fazan is the retail food and drink manager at KLBD. Sharon has been with KLBD since 2012. Her focus is to source and promote KLBD certified retail food and drink products worldwide. Sharon attends exhibitions from around the world searching for companies that are interested in kosher certification. From London to Manila, from Cologne to Las Vegas, many exhibitors over the years have met Sharon. Sharon also helps these companies, once certified, to expand their sales within the kosher market through KLBD kosher food events and the annual kosher, Fed, kosher fest exhibition in North America. Towards the end of the session, there'll be an opportunity for questions. There will also be a quiz on Zoom with prizes. The answers to the quiz will have been included in the talk or on the promotions. So I guess we need to listen carefully. So that we can send the prizes to the right person, we'll need to know your name. So please, would you make sure your name on your Zoom profile is meaningful? The three key topics of this evening are, what companies do to attain KLBD certification, how to find kosher yeah. product on the high street, and hear about the global search for kosher products. With that, I give you Sharon. Hello, good evening. Thank you very much for having me. And I do hope you enjoy the event. Um, I don't know if any of you had ever been to one of my regular KLBD roadshows. Those events, I brought a huge range of different KLBD prod certified products for people to see and taste. But sadly with COVID, these came to a halt back last February, a year ago now. So September, we started our virtual roadshows, showing some of the products that have been certified during these difficult times and where to pick them up uh, on the high streets specifically and um, on online as well. Um, you'd have received some of the promotions with more KLBD products and some discount codes. Please do use them. I uh, hope you don't, hope you enjoy the evening in its new format. There'll be a competition at the end, like Gary said, two winners with the correct answers will be chosen at random and each will receive a really nice goodie box with a selection of delicious KLBD certified products. Please make sure you listen to the talk and have looked at the promotions and this is where the answers will be. So I've been working for KLBD now for eight and a half years as their retail food and drink manager. When I got the job, I'd never worked in food before, having been in dentistry for all my working life. Even though I keep a kosher home, there's so much to learn about kashrut that even after all these years, I still learn new and important things. I'm very much a foodie, vegetarian from the age of 16 and vegan for the last two years. So food takes up a lot of my time. So the job was right up my alley. In normal times, I spend a lot of time attending food exhibitions around the world, looking for new products to certify kosher. These exhibitions, whether in New York, Dubai, Germany, the Philippines or London, are all international and have companies, companies exhibiting from all over the world. Many of the foods we eat are made outside the UK, even some of those that are well-known brands. At the moment, I'm contacting food and drink companies via email, telephone and LinkedIn and encouraging them to certify their products as kosher. I've now attended three virtual exhibitions and have three more booked from my office at home, two in the UK and one in Turkey, which was amazing. Having Zoom meetings with owners of food brands, plus our virtual stand that was open from two to four every day of the exhibition where companies just popped in. Let me start showing you some products if I may. Um, second. Okay, so the first company I'm going to show you is uh, one of the newest that we've certified. It's um, called Full Green. It's made from cauliflower, broccoli and sweet potato and is used instead of uh, couscous, rice or any grain in salads or hot dishes. It's low calorie and very healthy. 
There are three in the kosher range, but there is a fourth one that isn't kosher, so be careful. They're available in most leading supermarkets. If you go to the website, you'll find lots of ways of using full green. KLBD are putting together a recipe ebook at the moment to help everyone make the most of some of the excellent products we certify. It should be out very soon. So a little about KLBD. KLBD, Kosher London Beth Din, is also known as the Kushrut Division of the London Beth Din, is the leading UK and European authority on Jewish dietary laws. We're one of the world's five leading kosher certification agencies, along with the OU, Star K, Kuf K, and Circle K. These latter four being in the USA. We're also the oldest in the world and the largest in Europe. The KLBD certification is known for its reliability and for its professional approach to kosher certification. We also belong to ACO, Association of Kashrut Organizations, which only accepts kosher agencies of the highest level. KLBD certify over 50,000 ingredients worldwide, well over 3,500 retail products. We certify over 1,500 factories in over 70 countries. Many of the kosher products, as I said before, that we have in the UK are manufactured overseas. We exhibit each year at Kosher Fest in New Jersey, which is the background that you can see. Um, we allow some of our certified companies to use the stand with us to promote their products. This helps them grow as they get in front of some of the most important kosher buyers in the world. Kosher Fest doesn't let all kosher agencies exhibit. They need to be of a high standard so that all buyers, distributors, and anyone else visiting can be sure their products there that they order will be respected worldwide. Let me show you another product range now, if I may. So I'd like to show you Greenfields. We certify Greenfields in May. They have a fantastic range of spices and herbs, 179 in all that we certified. They have 39 fantastic kosher blends, including Al, Ras El Hanut, which I've seen lots of um, Otolenghi recipes, a Harissa blend, as well as a Madras curry blend. I was trying to find a ground caraway for some Tunisian salad recipes, and they were the only brand that I could find that sold it. They're renewing all their packaging at the moment, so soon the KLBD logo will be on all packs. In the meantime, please check on our app, isitkosher.uk. They're available in many independent stores as well as in Morrison's. In addition to my department certification, we have a couple of other departments. Licensing, which licenses the restaurants, shops, caterers, and arranges these inspections for these facilities, venues, and for events. They also license many of the kosher for Pesach hotels around the world, with our inspectors spending weeks making sure these hotels are kosher for Pesach before and during the Chag. Then there's the food technology department, producing the NOSH guide and the really, good, really kosher food guide and working on the app for the community and also answering calls throughout the day, largely from people in supermarkets wanting to know if various products are kosher. Another part of their job is the groundwork for approving some products as kosher. The job I do in certification is mainly a service to the community to get as many retail products certified as I can so we have more choice of what we can eat. I also work closely with these companies that KLBD certify to help them make the most of their certification. Making sure the products are readily available to the Jewish community in the UK and that you know about them. We're fortunate to have a number of world experts in staff. Their expertise include dairy, whiskey and spirits, fats and oils, flavors and colors. We're contacted regularly by other kosher agencies who need the expertise that we have in-house. Companies certify as, as kosher for many different reasons. It could be that a distributor from Israel or the USA want to import their products and have asked for them to be kosher, or they could feel that by having kosher, they'll be inclusive to everyone and this will improve their sales. 
The reason for having kosher is financial. And for them to keep their certification year after year, they need to see their sales rise. You'll find KLBD products around the world, including Israel and the USA. Rivita, Jacob's Crackers, Dorset Cereals are but a few that are on sale in the US, with Tip Tree Jam, Coleman's Mustard, Mars, and many others available in Israel. I attended a food show in Dubai last February and their supermarkets have a fantastic array of KLBD products, most with the KLB lo KLBD logo clear for people to see. For me, that was a great help, and for many others too, I'm sure. The new agreement between Israel and the UAE has meant that both countries can now export to the other, meaning that kosher certification of a, is of great, uh, great importance in the UAE. We've now certified six large companies there, and since the agreement, I've had three more large companies apply for kosher certification and expect quite a few more. It may not be easy to certify them as camel milk, which is not kosher, is readily available in the UAE. And we need to make sure that not only do the products not contain this milk, but also that there's no chance of contamination in the factories. Bahrain, who's also in the same agreement, is different as there's very little food production there. An interesting story I heard from the owner of Luxardo, Liqueurs, from Italy, when I met him in Milan. He was excited to meet me for the first time after working together for so many years. He said he has getting great sales in Morocco. I found that quite strange, Morocco being a Muslim country. He said they told him that if they were going to drink alcohol, they wanted it to be kosher. Let me show you something else. Talking about liqueurs. This brings me to the Tip Tree Gin Liqueurs range. Five different flavored liqueurs, raspberry, strawberry, rhubarb, damson and quince. We only certify the 35 mil bottles. Tip Tree is an old established com company from 1885. We're so lucky to have Tip Tree jams back for Pesach. They work so hard to get these done, having to buy in specific ingredients for these eight days and having our inspectors continually continually whilst the jams are being made. Their spreads and curds are kosher throughout the year, but not Pesach. These gin liqueurs are on offer on their website at the moment. They're also available across the country. I get to talk to food and drink companies from around the world when I visit the food exhibitions. Anuga in Cologne in Germany with over 8,000 exhibitors. Gulf Food in Dubai, 5,000 exhibitors from 182 different countries. Natural Products West in California with 2,500 exhibitors from 132 countries. Maybe these figures don't mean much, but these exhibitions are huge. In normal times, I visit around 16 exhibitions a year, and most are not as large as these. The large exhibitions will last for five days, but talking to companies is really quite exhausting, and two to three days is more than enough for me. But having met about three to 400 companies within this time, there's always interest in kosher with many of the companies I speak to. Let me show you now Buja Buja. I'm sure many of you know the delicious Buja Buja ice cream. They're parav, vegan, organic, soya and gluten free. And as they put it, only made with a handful of carefully sourced ingredients, including cashew nuts and sweetened with agave or coconut syrup and all certified through us. We also certify two of their chocolate truffles, Ecuadorian and raspberry. Each of these... <laughs> Sorry, can you see me? Is everything all right? Yeah? Yes, that's fine, thank you. Okay, each of the eight ice creams have a number printed on the tub between four and seven, representing the small number of ingredients used to make them. They're available in Waitrose, Holland and Barrett, and many independent stores. There are hundreds of products on the promotional sheets, many I'm sure you never realized were kosher, those and the ones I mention here are available nationally, either in supermarkets, health food stores, or online. 
There's no need to only go to kosher shops to buy kosher products. With the KLBD app, is it kosher.uk in hand, you'll find lots of certified products around your supermarket. In the Supermarket Indian section, you'll find the green fields herbs and spices, eat and co-fresh snacks, Foodco chai teas, and Gita's chutneys. In the free from section, Bee Free and Warburton's gluten-free breads, wraps, crumpets, Dove's Farm, also gluten-free, cookies and flour, Sainsbury's free from ice creams, are kosher certified by us. Sadly, there's no logo, but if you check them on the app, you'll see that they are certified. The Booja Booja ice creams, the Shees, dairy-free cheeses, also certified by us. A lot of the uh, dairy-free cream cheeses and hard cheeses that are um, uh, supermarket brands are also certified. So always worth checking on the app. In the bakery section, when you're on holiday and can't get kosher certified bread from a bakery, You've got the Hovis breads, the Warburton's breads, bagels, and breakfast products, and much more. Again, not all Warburton's have the KLBD logo, so always best to check the app. Around the supermarket, Rude Health, granolas, milks, mueslis, and some of their crackers. Dorset cereals, granolas, and mueslis. The list goes on. Holland and Barrett, you fancy a snack. It's a great place. You've got the urban fruits, the naked bars, vegan chocolate, Plamel, make it from, from a brand called Plamel, who also do non-dairy um, chocolate spreads, which are very nice. Again, Booja Booja chocolates, the vegan cheeses, and, and lots of superfoods made by Aduna, Natura, and Rainforest, all certified by us. Please, always look for the logo, but if you don't find it and you're not sure, check the app. I do my main shop every week through a cardo and sometimes receive substitutes, especially recently. I would suggest that you either opt out and ask for no substitutes to be offered or um, to eliminate the possibility of getting non-kosher products or check the substitutes through the app, is it kosher.uk, when you receive the text telling you that what they're sending. That way you, you can send them back if they're not suitable. The other issue I'm finding is that products in a Cardo's kosher section, I'm sure it's the same in many other supermarkets, some of them are actually not kosher. Sure, this is possibly the same, as I said, in other places. I came across uh, one the other day and immediately emailed a Cardo to tell them, please don't just accept that something is said to be kosher because it needs to be checked because I've done it two weeks in a row now. I found four or five products in the kosher section that were not kosher at all. Let me show you something else. These are also some really new products. Uh, the company is called Lexi, Lexi Streets. It's a small company, also certi certified last year. They put the KLBD logo straight on packs. These are dairy, gluten-free, and with only 99 calories a bar. They launched three new flavors this week. They're all also KLBD certified. They're available through their website and Amazon. I've tried to get a peek um, at, to see if there's anything else coming out that's non-dairy, but I haven't heard of anything yet. But from all the um, reviews I've seen, they're meant to be very, very good. All the promotions sent to you will have on them some of the places that, are the, that you um, can uh, buy, find the products. So the first stage of getting products kosher certified is for a company to complete a very short application form. We ask for their company details if the factory manufactures products with dairy, meat, fish or grape, and a short synopsis of their manufacturing process. A flowchart always helps. This should give us enough information with a bit of research to ascertain whether or not the products can be certified kosher. We also check to see if there's any other products they produce that we could also include. We don't charge to certify these extra products if they're made in the same factory. We will then ask for a list of all the ingredients and some other technical data. One fact important to us is what else is made in the factory. We look into every ingredient used, where it comes from, and in most cases, 
whether the company has a kosher certificate for that particular item. The ingredients are graded, A1, A2 and A3. A1 are straightforward, such as spices, grains, flour, sugar and salt. A2 are where various simple processes are involved, like dried fruit, processed nuts. For these, we would need either a kosher certificate or a statement from the company. A3 are the more complex, like emulsifiers, flavors and colorings. We would need a kosher certificate of the highest standard for everything in this category. Ideally, we advise a brand owner to certify their entire brand. Then that brand becomes synonymous with kosher and there's no doubt in the mind of the consumer that the products can be eaten. Where possible, we try to coordinate with a company before they design and build a factory to make sure it will be compliant. Certifying Mars chocolates and ice creams with all the different ingredients and many factories was a time consuming challenge. As I said, we need to know what else is made in the factory and if anything else is made on those particular production lines. Any chance of contamination with a food deemed to be not kosher will deem the product to be kosher certified as not kosher too. This is the case with many fruit juices and smoothies where grape juice is often used in the drinks or on the lines. The new sugar tax, which isn't so new now, has meant that companies are using grape juice instead of sugar so that they are exempt from the tax. Other issues could be crackers or biscuits being made on trays that are also used for non-kosher cheese. This would make the crackers non-kosher. Power of ice cream or chocolate being made on the same machinery as dairy products. This would obviously make the power of ice cream or chocolate dairy. Other issues we've had more recently is vegan products like burgers, sausages and mints being made in the same facility as, as meat products. Unless these are made in totally separate rooms with no door in between, and we feel 100% sure that there's no chance at all of contamination, we would not be able to certify them. We also need to know if products are produced hot or cold. Kettle crisps flavor their crisps cold, which makes it much easier for us to certify. If we need to change anything in the factory, we would advise the company to make these changes. Sometimes they're happy to do so, sometimes they're not or just can't make the changes needed. The expense of changing trays on a production line because non-kosher cheese has been used on them could be tens of thousands of pounds. And having to kosherize a line or oven with a 24 hour stop may be near enough impossible for a factory that's producing 24 seven. As many companies don't produce their own products but use manufacturing sites, we familiarize ourselves with sites around the world that can produce kosher. If a company are unable to certify as kosher at the site they presently use, we can advise them of other sites here and abroad where this can be done. One of the largest manufacturers of Tetra Pak drinks in the UK is unable to produce kosher because they use grape, down, grape juice down all their lines. I've had four companies whose products are produced there keen to certify as kosher but just can't because of these issues. So we've advised many new companies on sites in the Netherlands and France that we know for sure can produce kosher. Once we're happy with the ingredients and factory set up, the final step is for one of our auditors to inspect the site, checking all the ingredients and process of manufacture and all the documentation. The auditor checks the certificates are up to date and walks the factory checking the ingredients. This is done at least once a year or for complex products more often. Once the company has been certified their products as kosher, they need to make sure that people know that they're now certified and where the products are available. This is very important for us too, as we want to make sure you know about all these new products. We can help them with this, but the responsibility of course lies with them. I've been working closely with a large Lithuanian company called Uga, who produced many different products, but we're certifying their, their delicious ambient soups as kosher. This needs to be done in batches as a rabbi needs to be present for the production. I've been able to arrange that these batches will go to Israel, the UK and all over Europe 
through a French kosher distributor. This works perfectly for everyone. Uga sells more soups and we get another delicious product available in our kosher shops. Within the contract, they also sign that they will put the KLBD logo on pack. This is often too expensive for small companies to do straight away as changes to packs can cost thousands of pounds, which we, means that we need to wait for the logo to be printed. But as time goes on, more and more products have the logo on pack and it's becoming easier for us to find them in store. Let me take you now to, to Supernature. Noelle started Supernature out of a simple passion for making her own natural treats for one of her daughters who was unable to have dairy, gluten or processed sugar. They make their own chocolate and roast all the nuts. They're power of and available in health food stores and online. I saw them with the KLBD logo on, in Planet, um, Planet Organic a couple of weeks ago. I've actually tried them and they really are delicious. A question I'm often asked is what is the difference between certified and approved products? As I said, KLBD certified products have been checked to the highest level possible through checking paperwork as well as an in-depth inspection. Products that are approved are investigated by our food technology team and approved on the basis of information received from the manufacturers. The investigations are carried out mainly through correspondence and through the phone and cover ingredients, processing aids, and shared use of manufacturing equipment. An important difference between approved and certified is that companies who certify their products as kosher have signed that they will not make any changes to ingredients or anything else to do with the production without informing us first. This means that if there are changes, we will be able to let you know before this happens in case this means that the product is no longer kosher. This is not the case with approved products, although generally we can pick important changes quickly and keep the public informed. If you are able to, uh, to purchase certified products under reputable Hersha, this is always the best. We help our certified companies as much as possible. We meet with them to discuss what they should do to let people know that they're now kosher certified. We give them a list of UK and Israeli kosher food distributors to contact. We send their details to certif of certified products to distributors and kosher shops around the world, as well as the KLBD caterers, shops and restaurants. We promote their products through roadshows and virtual roadshows like this evening. We include an article on their company and products on our website, promote their products on our Facebook group and over all our social media channels, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We have over 9,000 members on Facebook who are constantly looking for new kosher products to uh, purchase. We offer them to chance to put recipes through our, um, using our, their kosher products or ingredients through our social media, whether it's vegan cheese for Shavuot, honey or agave for Rosh Hashanah, or dried fruit for Tu Bishvat. All their recipes are really appreciated. We put their product details on our app, isitkosher.uk. The app is free to download and works offline. Many kosher tourists come to the UK with the app and local Muslims use it too. Finally, we can take their products to Kosher Fest, the world's largest kosher food exhibition for display and for people to see. This is the best kosher exhibition for companies to be seen at. We'd highly recommend that you download the app if you haven't already, is it kosher.uk. This allow you to search for everything available in the UK. Also, please become a friend of our Facebook group. It's called KLBD Kosher Direct. The group is where, you'll, where you can ask questions. And as I previously said, see what's new, what's on offer and recipes. Um, we also have a new um, alert. Where's the new alert? There it is. So uh, this is our new Kashrut alert. It's, it works through WhatsApp, tells you of any alerts, new products certified, products that are no longer kosher, and anything else we feel is important to you. 
The instructions are in the bottom right hand corner. You need to put the phone number 0208 343 633 into your address book and then send us a WhatsApp saying that you want to register. The other, the other thing you can do is you can take a photo of the symbol, the uh, QR code. Just scan the, uh, the QR code into your phone and uh, you'll be registered for the alerts. They are coming out quite regularly. There's a lot going on there. And to see the alerts on WhatsApp, which took me quite a long time to find out, there's a little uh, ring at the top of the screen. Um, and if you have an alert, there's a little green mark on that. When I speak to new companies about kosher certification, their response is sometimes that they've never been asked for kosher. Please, if you want to have a product certified kosher, contact us, but more importantly, contact the companies themselves and tell them you'd like their product to be kosher. The more people that do this, the more chance we have of making your favorite products kosher. I hope you've had a good look at the, uh, at the uh, product promotions that were sent to you. Please take advantage of these. Please support these companies and all other KLBD certified companies by buying their products. They've worked hard to have them certified. Just one more thing to show you. So if you do have any queries in the future and would like to contact me, here are my details. Hope you find new kosher products of interest to you from the talk and from the product promotions. Um, if you haven't got it, I'm sure the shield will send it out for you again. And thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Gary, over to you. You're on mute. Still on mute. It would help if I came off mute. It's not the first time and it won't be the last time I do that. Sharon, that was absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Um, there will now be an opportunity for questions to Sharon. Um, when you ask, please feel free to unmute and ask your questions aloud. If you really prefer to do it by text, we'll pick them up by text. Sharon also prefers that people's faces can be seen when they speak. So if you can uh, be on video, that's preferred, but not essential. So if there are any questions, please feel free to unmute and Sharon will be happy to answer. I believe the quiz will be later, Sharon, yes? Yes, after this, yeah. Any questions for anyone? Can um, I just say... <laughs> Naomi, hi Naomi. Hello. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. I was very nice to see you face to face, Sharon. I wasn't. Um, I, you know, I wasn't sure if it was the same Naomi Conway. It is. Nice to meet you um, too. I just wanted to tell everybody that um, thanks to Sharon, I have started um, a business called Boostbook, and my 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 aim is not to promote it, although that wouldn't be wouldn't be a bad idea. But I phoned Sharon, who gave me hours and hours of her time, telling me which products are um, are kosher, which products are vegan, and without her invaluable help I um, mm -hmm. I would not have got my business off off the ground so I'd like to publicly thank you Sharon for this pleasure. wonderful, pleasure, wonderful service. Pleasure anytime. Anybody Still else? I think you had a question. If can I ask you something? Of course. If, if something uh, it's Sue Pearl here if something is vegan and doesn't have grape juice in it um, how kosher is it? Well it it's not, it's not kosher and they've checked it. Again, as I said in my talk, you know, it could be shared use of equipment. It could be um, that it was shared with something non-kosher. It could be mm -hmm. shared with something dairy. Um, it could have, um, because it's vegan, it could have, for instance, goji berries um, and mulberries. We found, um, have been infested with insects, which obviously we can't eat. Um, quite a couple of years ago now, we had a company that's superfoods um, and we found massive infestation of insects in their mulberries. And we called them and we said to them, we're really sorry, we can't, um, we can't uh, certify them anymore. So they said, oh, don't worry about it. We've just thrown away 50 tons because they found so many insects in them. Wow. And then more recently, we've had it with Guji berries as well. So it could be lots of reasons why a vegan product is not kosher. It really Thank does you. need to be checked. Okay. 
Hi, Julie. Hi. You take yourself off mute, Julie. Yeah, sorry. No, um, sounds like a bit of a funny one. I'm not quite sure how to. How that's to, all right. But only you and me here. Yeah, yeah. No, no right. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, and 82 other people. Never mind. I was just, as you were talking, I was just thinking to myself, when you check certain products um, for a company, it, it, you know, manufacturer for foods, yeah. and, and then you, um, I guess there's some sort of precision tactic, what's in it for them to have the KLBD sign. So what is the process? Because I'm, I'm presuming that a lot of manufacturers and people that work there have never in their lives heard of Jews, have never heard of kosher, what what's the process that I guess I mean I guess you pay them to put KLBD stickers on. But do you kind of go through the whole thing and explain it okay. to them? So it's kind of the opposite of My what question. you said. So yeah. you just looking back over the years, the larger companies that are certified kosher, like Mars, like uh, Hovis, Warburton's, these kind of companies have all come to us. It's really difficult to persuade a large company to certify as kosher. You know, they've got they've got their, you know, their projects for the year and they decide that's what the general rule is. They they're the people that normally come to us. With the smaller companies, it's yes, it's me going out and talking to them, but everybody's heard of kosher. It is so rare that someone hasn't heard of kosher. Don't forget they're all in the food business and they're all trying to make money and they're all trying to get into more and more markets. So they have heard of kosher. They know what it's about. I mean, I speak to people all over the world. It could be Thailand, Vietnam, Bulgaria, Peru, uh, Bolivia I was talking to. You know, they're all looking. They, they want to grow their markets. We don't pay them to put the logo on. So uh, okay. part of what they get, it's, it's, it's prestigious that they are allowed to put the Kelby Do logo on their products by certifying them as kosher. So they pay okay. for all our work. And that includes right. the them being allowed to put the logo on pack. Oh, right. So it's not us paying them. So no, no. the other thing that we how we're different from many other or maybe all of the other kosher agencies in the world is that we include all these marketing services. Now, I'm not sure about the other other large four agencies, if they include it or not, but nobody's ever told me that they do. So this is something very special from KLBD that we do this for the for our certified companies. I mean, it's twofold. It's for us as well as them. So uh, on one side of it, we it means that we get to know about, or you get to know about all the new products, but it also helps their sales. And as I keep saying, they need to see growth in their sales, otherwise they won't carry on certifying. We've had quite a few people stopping their certification this year, which is very sad, but kind of understandable. They've had a very difficult time. I uh, spoke to somebody just today uh, who produces a, an oat milk, and he said 90% of their sales were in restaurants. Oh, and, and that all went during COVID. So now they've had to build it up through selling online, through more in um, cafes, uh, because the cafes are open for takeaway. It's really been difficult for them. So yeah, it's um, it cost them. So they have to make their money back at least. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else want to ask a question? Yes, please. Who's that? Sorry, I don't know who I'm talking Estelle. to. Sorry? Can I, my name's Estelle. Can I oh, ask Estelle. you what's happening with Marmite and why can't we get it? Okay. So Marmite, <laughs> I wish you hadn't asked me that. Marmite's a difficult one. Um, we've been chasing them. I've been chasing them. Lots of us have been chasing them for quite a while because um, we were trying, one of the distributors who distributes the kosher, Marmite was trying to do another batch. And they've been told all different things. They've been told that it's stopped production at the moment because that they're, um, they've run out of one of the main um, of the brewer's yeast that's used to make it. Then we've heard other rumors that it's other things. And to be absolutely honest, we haven't had a straight answer. We are, honestly, the distributor and me are on the phone or emailing you know, a couple of times a week. We don't want to drive them mad. We don't want to, them to go the other way, but we are really trying hard and we are not getting a straight answer. But the last production that was meant to be done wasn't done because they said they couldn't do it then. So we are really struggling with this and I, I apologize, but I don't have a straight answer. I hope, I hope very soon we will and I hope there'll be a positive answer.
This would it help if people emailed the company to say, oh, we'd like this. Yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Or call their um call their customer service. It can't do any harm at all. Definitely. I mean there is South Africa though. Where do they where do they produce this? Isn't it South Africa? No, no, no. This is English. No, we're not allowed. This is the whole problem. If we were allowed to import the Marmite from South Africa then we would have done that now. Well, not us personally, but the distributor would have done that now, you know, because we've got this gap and we don't have any products at the moment. But the issue was that um, there's an agreement between the Unilever in South Africa and the Unilever here, not allowing us in the UK to bring it over. And one of the kosher shops had a huge fine when they were doing it last time. So nobody wants to do that without the agreement of Unilever. Hello. I've got here Meridian Almond Sorry, Butter. Who am I talking to? I'm at David Schein. Oh, hi. Mer Meridian Almond Butter. Uh, it hasn't got uh, uh, your logo on. Yeah. Uh, it's, it says vegetarian, plant-based. It says vegan, plant-based. I don't well, even, I, it's definitely not certified. I don't know if it's approved. I can have a look on the app. Um, it's Meridian. Meridian almond, Fruit. Almond Meridian Butter. Almond Butter. Uh, the smooth or which one? Smooth. Smooth. Um, it's been it's been approved. It's not certified. That one has been approved. Always best to look at the app. If you go to if you go on the computer, is it kosher.uk, you can put in there Meridian Almond Butter Smooth and you'll see that it's been approved. It's not certified. And a company that is approving their products is not allowed to put our logo on it. Only certified products. And have our logo on. Good, so we can have it. Good, thank you. Pleasure. Any other questions? Yeah, hi Sylvia. You need to unmute yourself. You need to unmute yourself. Top right hand corner. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, fine. Um, thank you very much and thank Pleasure. you for all your efforts. And if you do nothing else, please, 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 make sure that we all get our marmite but that's not what like, well that, we were, honestly we're working hard on it and okay, as, um, as hannah said you know it's worth your while phoning up or writing in it can't do any harm at all <laughs> right that wasn't going to be my question and okay. i don't know if this is slightly off topic and i i've been quite bothered about it on a, a few occasions and I, I don't know what control or influence a, a very large organization like klbd has um, in the days, if you can remember back when we used to physically go much more to supermarkets, um, there's particularly one, and I don't know if I should name them, one very large supermarket that I go to, which has an area of uh, uh, cool products, so refrigerated products, and on one side it has a label mark, a big, uh, how do you call it, a shell, it's a big sign post, yeah. a sign saying kosher products, and next to it is something that says halal. Yes. And clearly, the uh, how do you call them? The shelf fillers and the they stuff get confused. are, um, to put it mildly, um, I want to say negligent, but lackadaisical about what goes in where. Now, obviously, we have a principle of caveat emptor, and we assume that most, certainly, kosher consumers, if I go up, I don't randomly pick up a roll of sausage and pick up the halal one. I did, however, feel that it was sloppy and that's putting it mildly and I did complain to the branch manager and talked about I didn't actually say cross contamination but I did say it was extremely important for kosher consumers to buy kosher and halal consumers to buy halal yes sometimes there may be areas of overlap but the point was that I in this instance and many other kosher consumers only wanted to buy kosher I got nowhere with the store manager and then I took it further with uh, customer services and I felt I got nowhere and in fact only because sort of life is too busy I wondered whether is that something that you at KLBD take up at a at a national level with supermarkets and say to them look we're really really happy that you're stocking kosher certified products but please can you make sure it's a well the, the analogy would be with gluten-free products they would well, somebody would come down okay, them with like a ton of bricks if it was all muddled up yeah, okay, yeah. so can you the, can you say something about that? Okay. So firstly, as I mentioned in my talk about a cardo, at the end of the day, it is our responsibility. We need to check what we're doing. And I have been contacting a cardo about it. 
I initially sent an email through um, my KLBD email address, but they actually came back to me and said they wouldn't deal with me, they'd only deal with me through my registered email. So I had to start doing it through my personal one. As well as that, I really try hard to meet buyers, kosher buyers from all the supermarkets. It is impossible. I can't tell you how much time I spend on it and just don't get anywhere. They're not interested in meeting us. They're not interested in hearing about new products. Um, I, I think it must have been last March. I'd actually arranged a meeting with the kosher buyer for Tesco. I was thrilled. Anyway, it got cancelled, got cancelled, got cancelled because of all the lockdowns. Since I think now September, he hasn't even responded to me. So it has to be up to the consumer. I mean, it's the same for Pesach. You know, you go into Sainsbury's for Pesach and you see all these, their kosher products on the shelves, but they're not certified. It happened, what was it? I think I picked up a pesto or, or uh, some dried tomatoes. I said, are you sure they're kosher? Yes. I mean, are you sure they're kosher for Pesach? Yes, yes, yes. I said, but they haven't got a logo on them. It is our responsibility. I mean, and they, you know, there's, yeah, you just got to, each one's got to be responsible for themselves. I can't hear you, Sylvia. Sylvia, Sylvia, you need to come off mute. Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, but is there not, would you not see a difference between the consumer, the kosher consumer, having to take responsibility to check whether it's kosher le Pesach or generally kosher? Yes. Which we would expect a kosher alert consumer to be um, vigilant about. Yes, yes. And I would see, in my very, very humble opinion, see a difference between that and going in, uh, putting my hand into a freezer cabinet or a fridge cabinet and halal products have just been randomly thrown in. And the argument I used in my email, it was actually to Asda, was that if you were being that lackadaisical about gluten-free or some of the free from products, you would have a lot of people being very, very upset. It's true equally that the consumer has to be aware for his or her self or children, but do they not have any I, sort of interest in keeping that. them separate? Sylvia, I've really tried hard to contact these, these and I'm, I'm not getting anywhere. And it's more important for really for me to spend the time trying to get new, new kosher products, uh, trying to make sure that you know about them. And, you know, the, yeah, I think what you've done today is letting all of your community know also is important. And, you know, if they feel that it's right for them to go and complain, then yes, I think they should too. But so, so do you think that if I'm still feeling irritated about it, I should write to Asda again and say, why not? Please keep Absolutely. them separate. Right. I would. Definitely I would. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Do, do we have a next question? Thank you. Anybody, anyone wrote any questions up on the chat that they want to ask me personally? So we have been asked, what's the difference between approved and certified? Which I did mention in my talk. Yes, but I maybe if you could, could revise again, it. So again, the ones that are certified are of the oh, highest oh. level. Hi, Reem. Hi, Reem. Sorry. Every single ingredient is checked. So we start at the beginning, they fill out an application. They tell us whether the uh, factory has great meat, fish or dairy. So we have an outline. From there, we will ask them for a list of every single ingredient. We'll go through absolutely everything and we'll ask questions again, like with the approved. Mm -hmm. um, a rabbi will also inspect, which doesn't happen with, them, with the approved. Nobody ins actually inspects the site. Um, and the other thing, as I said, is they are signing that they will not make any changes without telling us first. So those are really the main differences. They are still checked. Um, you know, we don't let anything go by. Um, the director will check everything off before it is approved. Um, so, you know, it is of a lower level, but it's still of a level. It's much higher than not certification. Um, is there a cost difference? doesn't cost them anything to be approved but we and don't certified certified it does cost of course yes yeah um but um we don't we don't approve products on request so the only things we will approve is if for instance on our facebook group if we get hundreds or of requests for a specific product we'll first of all see if there's anything similar that's been certified an example non-dairy yogurts 
It could be because you're a vegan. It could be because uh, somebody is um, lactose intolerant. So um, at the moment, we did have some uh, vegan non-dairy yogurts, but there's none at the moment. So the decision was whether just to approve something which doesn't bring any money, we don't have as much control over, or try to get a company to certify. So I've been spending a lot of time talking to one specific company that produces a vegan yogurt, a vegan cream cheese, a vegan um, um, kefir, um, who a company that um, I know well because part of it was certified in the past. And hopefully, hopefully I've persuaded them that it's worth their while certifying, which is much better for all of us. It's much better to have a certified product than to have a proof one because we know it's of the highest level and they have to tell us of any changes. So we'll only approve something if there's nothing like it on the market that is certified or already approved. Hope that helps. Sharon, there's a further question. As well as Tesco baked beans being certified, is there any possibility of the low sugar version also becoming certified? The thing is that isn't coming from us. That is coming from the manufacturer of the baked beans. Now, I don't know who manif I don't know whose baked beans those are, but all I can tell you was I was searching for kosher baked beans on Tesco's website for a totally different reason for some export I was doing. So um, what was I search for? What was I looking for? No, I was looking for Rakuzin's baked beans because they do baked beans. And when I searched for Rakuzin's baked beans, the Tesco ones came up. Now, I don't know if that's because Rakuzin's make them. I'm not sure. I can't hear, Hannah. I can see your mouth moving, but I can't hear. Um, so they I don't, don't taste the same. Okay, so I, I don't eat baked beans. <laughs> I have no idea who makes them. That's the thing. So if I knew who makes them, I'd say, go out and please, you know, speak to them and ask them if the sugar-free can be done. Um, you know, there's another kosher baked bean, Hillfields. I don't know if they do a sugar-free, because I know who makes them. So... Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you could always write to Hillfields and see if they have a market for sugar-free or low-sugar baked beans, because they're a very, very nice company, Italian company. Another idea. Hope that helps. Thank any, you. Any other questions? Gary? Um, if that's the case, Sharon, would you like to move on to the quiz? Yeah, no more questions? Perfect, lovely, yes, pleasure. So if we will put a quiz on the screen and um, Sharon, if you would explain how to fill it out and how to do it. Okay. So there are four or five questions here and it's a multiple choice and you have to choose one answer in each of the questions. You can only see two questions at the moment, but once you've answered those, you just scroll down and you'll get the rest of the questions. Once you've answered all the questions, press submit, and then your answers will go through to Gary. Good luck. And we will seek to pull together the answers and arrange for the prizes to be delivered over the coming days or so. That's right. So you'll need to give Gary uh, your addresses so that I can get them delivered to you. It's a really lovely goodie box of all KLBD certified products. Uh, I don't know how, there must be about, I don't know, I'm guessing 30 to 40 different products in there for you to try. And Sharon, at the end, would you like us to display what answers were, were submitted? If you want, with pleasure, we can go through those. I'm just looking at the questions at the moment whilst you're doing that. And somebody's asked about Twiglets. Now, <laughs> now Twiglets, I was, um, I was talking to Twiglets because we really wanted to certify them. And I worked on that for a long time, but they came back at the end and said, they're sorry, they didn't want to proceed, which I was upset about. What else is on there?
How are they doing, Gary? They're nearly all finished? Um, 56% have voted. Make sure you press the submit button at the end. So Sharon, should we allow one more minute? Because one yep. more minute work for everyone. That's fine. And in that way, we can try and tie up by nine o'clock uh, for people who need to go elsewhere. We just go through the answers quickly, and then make sure that Gary has your um, contact details. Okay, another 15 seconds. Three, two, one. Okay. okay. Are you able to see the results? So the first question, Supernature, how many ingredients does each product contain? Four. Excellent. So 67% got that right. Tip Tree Gin Liqueurs. Name one of the flavoured gin beginning with an R. So actually nearly everyone got it right. Rhubarb and also raspberry. Both of those answers are correct. Greenfields. Name a supermarket where greenfield spices and herbs are available. Morrison's. Well done. Greenfields. What is green? What is sorry? Full green. What is full green made from? Again, 85% cauliflower. Very good. Booja booja. What is the maximum different amount of ingredients in each pot of booja booja ice cream? So some of them, some of you thought that I said the minimum, it was the maximum, which is seven. So a lot of you got it right. Some of you got it wrong as well. Sharon, I'd like to thank you for what has proven to be a really fascinating and enjoyable evening. Um, we will be posting the recording on the Shuttles YouTube site and the link will be available. Um, really many, many thanks and I wish everyone a uh, good evening. Thank and you very again, much. Thank, thank you me. hugely for your time, Sharon. That's been Pleasure. really fascinating. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Sharon, thank you very, thank you very much. much.